So in this video, I want to talk about attackums. Attackums were apparently used for the first time in Ukraine just yesterday as Ukraine attacked uh, airfields. Uh, that were further than where we thought Ukraine could attack. So they got some attackums and used them before they were announcing that they were in country, which was a smart move. Okay, so I'm no military expert. I'm a professor. I'd provide context about what's going on in the war in Ukraine, but I do do my homework and we're going to work through a couple of articles and videos that should help you understand how attackums work. This is the Voice of America from today, October, or from yesterday, excuse me, October. October 17th, Zelensky confirms Ukraine using long-range attackums from the United States. Ukraine launched attackums on Russian forces on Tuesday after the United States secretly provided a small number of the long-range ballistic missiles to Kyiv in recent days. Attackum stands for Army Tactical Missile System made by the U.S. company Lockheed Martin. It will allow Ukrainian forces to reach deeper into Russian-controlled territory. The U.S. had provided only Gimlers, short for Guided Multiple Launch Rocket Systems, rockets for the system. Gimlers have a range of about 90 kilometers or 60 miles, and the attack yesterday was a little bit further than that. So the Russians thought that we're safe, we're out of range, but... They weren't. The U.S. official who spoke to Voice of America on condition of anonymity said that the U.S. had secretly provided Ukraine with a small number of the older variant attackums, which has a maximum range of 170 kilometers or 106 miles. Okay, so yesterday when the news about the uh, air bases were hit, this is what I said. So I want you to listen to this during the war, but there it is. Okay, so Berdansk is all the way down on the Sea of Azov, and the closest, if we just use the distance measure map, is 106. If I mean, that's the closest possible point if you had your artillery right all the way over here. So it's possible that it's something that was fired from Ukraine at 106 kilometers, or it's possible that somebody somewhere snuck in closer. I don't know. I don't know that attackums are in country but to be able to hit okay and so nobody thought attackums were in country well we found out later in the day attackums were in country and again 106 kilometers is 65 miles so it's just over gimler's range so the russians thought we're we're not in any danger here um Turns out, okay, here's what I said later in the day when with three big stories. Uh, I was just talking in three minutes about the three big stories and the use of attackums was one of them. Here is a little bit more of the analysis. Attackums have a range of about 180 miles. That is 289 kilometers. If you Okay, so that is the other attackums. Now, we're not talking about those same attackums. I was talking here about the top of the line, or it's actually about 300 kilometers is top of the line. I said 289 because uh, it depends on if they talk about in miles or if they talk about in kilometers, but uh, roughly speaking. And then I went on and talked about this, about look at the what deep state they could map. strike. You see this. This is Ukraine. Here is the Kerch Bridge. It is 271, and you really need only two uh, you, you have a maximum range of 289, so Kerch Bridge is looking like it's in trouble. But if you move it anywhere else, you can move this from other points within Ukraine. There's pretty much, this is 296. Uh, if you move it into Herzon, which is a little bit closer, 268. There's pretty much nowhere within um, occupied Ukraine that the Ukrainians can't now hit. So that's the big. So I misspoke a little bit because that's with, and we don't know if they have the attackums that have that kind of range. They may very well have the new ones. They didn't tell us about the older version of attackums, but I was talking about the new one based on just like what is the range of an attackum. But Honestly, I got it wrong, I think, because they have the older variant. So here's what's happening here. The U.S. had provided only Gimlers who had 60-mile uh, range. U.S. official who spoke to, to, on anonymity said that the Ukraine was supplied with a small number of the old variant of attackums with a 106-mile range. So that's not the same thing. So I got it wrong, but didn't. I, I still don't know whether they have the new ones or not. They might have a new one or two. It's part of the package. We just don't know. 
Okay, the newer versions of Attackums have a maximum range of more than 300 kilometers or 186 miles. So that's when they have the new one, the Kerch Bridge is, it won't be long. Okay, according to media reports, President Biden told uh, Ukrainian President Volodymyr, Z Volodymyr Zelensky uh, that last month that the U.S. would uh, send a small number of Attackums missiles to Ukraine in the coming weeks. And they're here sooner than we thought. The newest version of Attackums also moves three to four times faster than other missiles seen on the battlefield, including Storm Shadow and the Russian KH-101. Wow, that's something. Okay, let's look at just a little bit. Jake talked about this yesterday, and I think this is helpful to kind of visualize how attackums work. Uh, I'm guessing this is somebody at the airfields just on their smartphone taking a five-minute video. It's dark. It's in the middle of the night. I'll link it down below if you want to watch it, but you can see the silhouette of one of these helicopters where, where nine were successfully destroyed. The Russians have also posted uh, pictures of the expended Attackums missiles with their serial information, so we know that these were Attackums missiles uh, produced in 1995, 96, and 97. These Attackums missiles are almost 30 years old. Ukraine is doing us a favor by just donating it to them and then allocating money to ourselves to build brand new missiles. These missiles were almost at the end of their service life, and they would have cost us money to decommission anyways. Might as well put them to good use. And it's being reported that these missiles are the Block 1A M39A1 variant, meaning they've got bomblets inside. This is a uh, cluster munitions rocket. Okay, let's go back to what he was just showing in this map. So there are MLRS and then Gimlers, and we've talked about Gimlers and various types of Gimlers, and then you have Attackums, and there's various types of Attackums. So some have longer range than others, and these are the bomblet types. Okay, let's... And it's being reported that these missiles are the Block 1A M39A1 variants, meaning... This one. They've got bomblets inside. This is a uh, cluster munitions rocket. So here's a very old video on YouTube put out by the U.S. Army showing exactly how they disperse the bomblets. So the missile, this is a test launch, the missile mid-flight uh, will accelerate and then start spinning. There's then explosives on the hull that detonate, releasing the bomblets as the missile is spinning. So I've slowed it down so you can kind of see what happens, but that was it. <laughs> that was the missile exploding in midair uh, to release uh, the cluster munitions. And the Russians were kind enough to take pictures and show us exactly what the expended bomblets look like. When you hit an airfield with this, you're trying to disperse the explosives as far as possible to damage as many aircraft and helicopters as possible. So according to the Russians, uh, this was a bad night. And it looks like Russia had, going back to February of last year, about 100 KA-52 attack helicopters. Each one is worth about $16 million. And as of today, they're now down to 30. They've lost seven. 70% of their KA-52 attack helicopter fleet, and for as big as Russia is, they've only got 30 remaining. That's pretty amazing. Okay, a little bit more about the uh, rockets themselves. This is from the Foundation for Defense and Democracy. However, two U.S. officials had told ABC News, uh, the Pentagon, by the way, this was Monday, okay, so this was, uh, yeah, September 15th. Um, this happened yesterday, and so they were just talking. I mean, it was like 
prophetic here. Two U.S. officials told ABC News the Pentagon has found more attackums in their inventory than originally assessed, although their serviceability and variant remains unclear. Lockheed Martin has produced a handful of different attackum variants. Modern versions carry the 500-pound unitary warhead and can hit targets up to 300 kilometers away. By contrast, the earlier variants were less accurate and carried warheads containing hundreds of anti-personnel, anti-material bomblets. The oldest version had a maximum range of just 165 kilometers. So we're using the older version clearly. A Reuters report published on Monday suggests that Ukraine may receive APAM carrying variant. This would be particularly useful for target, targeting Russian air defense systems. The U.S. military employed these missiles to great effect against Iraqi air defense systems during Operation Desert Storm. Their, the versions with unitary warheads would be more useful for striking Russian command posts and logistic nodes such as the Crimean Bridge. And when they have that, and which the they say are fair game, but when they have that, Crimean Bridge is in a world of trouble. Okay, last video. This is from UATV, and uh, it just talks about, this was about three months ago, but it was talking about what, uh, how attackums work and what the effect will be. If the armed forces of Ukraine received Atakam's missiles, they will be able to hit targets within a radius of 300 kilometers. This is about four times more than the missiles used by the HIMARS mobile systems, which the U.S. began supplying to Ukraine last year. Atakam's American... So HIMARS were a game changer on the battlefield. This is a game changer with four times the range. And tactical ground-to-ground -ground ballistic missiles. Their purpose is to hit point targets. They can be used with missile systems such as M270, HIMARS, and other modifications. Experts are sure that the provision of Atacams to Ukraine can change the course of the war. Russia will not have a chance to win. Realizing this, Moscow initiated a meeting of the UN Security Council and accused the West of supplying weapons to Kyiv. According to the Kremlin, this exacerbates the conflict. Washington responded to Russian rhetoric. Robert okay, so did you hear that? Attackums were so irritating or making the Russians so nervous that they initiated a meeting of the Security Council saying the U.S. is trying to pro prolong the war with this. <laughs> but Wood's deputy permanent representative of the United States to the United Nations said that these weapons do not continue the war, for which only the Kremlin bears responsibility, That's but right. allows them to protect civilian Ukrainians and prevent further brutality. The United States and more than 50 member states responded to Ukraine's call to support its defense against Russian aggression, and we will continue to do so for as long as it takes. Robert. Okay, so we're gonna, we're just going to stop there. Okay, that's what you need to understand about attackums. It looks like in Ukraine they have the older variant, but we don't know that they don't have the newer variant yet. We didn't know that they had the older variant as until yesterday. So that's where we are right now, and we'll find out more as time goes on. Thank you for listening. Thank you for caring. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the coffees. Thanks more than anything for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.